In this example, we're presented with a static system consisting of a horizontal rod and then a mass hanging off one end of it. And the thing is not falling because there's a tension in this string here and a hinge that we put right through the center of mass. So in question A, we're asked to compute the tension in that white cable. And I think my strategy here is to use this rotation axis. So the rotation axis right about the center of mass. That means that the hinge force doesn't get involved in the torque calculation, and neither does the force of gravity on the rod, which acts at the center of mass. So this should be a pretty simple calculation. The only thing I have to add here is to put in these missing distances. So it's a four meter rod. That means the center of mass is two meters from the end. I have 80 centimeters on this side, or 0.8 meters, which means this leftover piece is 1.2 meters. And again, the center of mass is 2 meters from the end, so the location of that hanging mass is at 2 meters. While I'm at it, I may as well put in the force of gravity on the hanging mass. So it's going to be what I'll call little mg. And I'll go ahead and throw the numbers in right now. That's 60 for the mass, 9.8 for g, and I get 588 newtons. Okay, so let's knock out question A. I'm going to use the fact that the sum of the torques is zero about any rotation axis I choose, and I chose the center of mass here. And that's the same as saying the clockwise torques have to sum to the same amount as the counterclockwise torques. And with respect to that center of mass, I only have two torques. I have the hanging mass on the end, the 60 kilogram mass pulling down, with a force of 588 newtons through a lever arm of 2.0 meters. Then my counterclockwise torque is exerted by that white cable, so that's an unknown force of T through a lever arm of 1.2 meters. So I smash the numbers on the left and divide by 1.2, and I find the T is 980 newtons. In part B, I want to find the force exerted by the hinge. And you could use torque to get a handle on this, but I chose to use the sum of the vertical forces to get a handle on it. And there are a couple forces we need to get into the diagram. So I have what I'll call big M, G. The force of gravity on this rod acts at the center of mass. Plugging in the numbers, 90 for the mass, 9.8 for G, I get 882 newtons acting downward at the center of mass. And then we run into kind of an interesting question. Does the hinge force point up or does it point down? And you can imagine just using some physical intuition here. If I put a heavy enough mass over here all the way on the right-hand side, it would try to pull the stick clockwise so hard that it would overwhelm the force of gravity down on the center of mass and push the stick upward on the hinge. In other words, the hinge would push down on the stick to hold it in place. Um, if the mass is light, on the other hand, then the hinge is going to end up pointing up. So I don't really know which way it points. And thankfully, the math all works out so that you can just choose a direction. So I'll put hinge force pointing up. And if I chose the wrong direction, I'm going to end up with a minus sign. So it's no big deal. Again, my strategy here will be the sum of the forces in the y direction must be equal to 0. That's the same as saying all the upward forces added together must be equal to all the downward forces added together. And my upward forces here are hinge force plus tension. And my downward forces are the 882 newtons from gravity pulling down on the stick, plus 588 newtons from gravity pulling down on the hanging mass. I've already figured out the tension is 980, so I get my hinge force pretty quick here. 882 plus 588 minus 980. And that comes out to 490 newtons for the hinge force that came out positive, which means we chose the correct direction for the hinge force when we originally set it up. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.